Hey you guys, so I thought um, it was about time for a tour of the vegetable garden. I'm sorry the light is impossible because it's either too dark or too bright, whatever. But let's take a look at the vegetable garden, uh, see how things are growing, which is generally slowly, but it's worth a peek. So if you haven't been following along, this is the vegetable garden that we built last year, but we first really finished it this year. This is the little walkway that um, I built in a video. And out of outside here, I've got boxwood, most of which I grew from very small plants and have been for a long time. My idea is that I'd like to make these a cloud pruned hedge. So if you've ever seen those, it's where they all sort of grow together, but they're all their own individual kind of random shape ball. It'll be a while before that happens. Uh, anyways, let's go inside and see what lies within. So here we go. I'm so happy about it. So I'll just walk you through each of the beds and then we'll take a look at that water garden in the middle. So over here, and so each I have four, no, I have eight, four by eight beds. And then I have four, two and a half by five foot beds. So over here we've got potatoes. Um, I grew four different kinds. I got a little sampler pack from somebody. So there's only, tw I only planted 12 potatoes, um, but they're looking really good. And over here we've got all kinds of peppers, which are looking pretty good considering that um, it was very, very wet and that's not really something that, and cool, none of which peppers appreciate. So they're doing okay. We've even got some, some flowers on one of them here. Uh, over here across the way uh, is my lettuce bed. It's getting a little hot for lettuces, um, but so far so good and I will try to harvest some of these. Um, some of them you can see like whatever it is that I planted in this row absolutely didn't work at all. But some of the rest of these are looking um, quite good. This is like a little baby romaine type lettuce. So I'm looking forward to that and I will eat them. If they start showing any signs of bolting, I'll grab them before I eat them. Over here, this is kind of a mishmash bed. So I've got, um, this is called boxwood basil. I actually bought it simply because it's cute. It's got a very strong flavor. This is a little bit of Italian oregano. Um, rosemary and thyme, two rows of a couple different kinds of basil, um, four parsley plants in the middle. This is called papalo. It's a Mexican herb. It's supposed to taste a little bit like cilantro. So I'm trying that instead of growing cilantro because of course that wants to bolt so quickly. Um, I will say the flavor hasn't been great, but it is a pretty plant. So it's got that going for it. And then in here, I started some dill from seed. That's just getting going. Here we've got arugula, which I'm going to eat a bunch of. And then over here, we've got cucumbers couple different kinds. Chelsea Prize is my favorite cucumber. Then I have one or two Chicago pickling in there too. Those are good for pickles. Um, over here across the way, this is the sort of squash bed. These are two baby butternut squashes. In the middle is a carnival squash and over here are two Romanesco zucchinis. Um, everything is kind of slow. Um, but you know, zucchinis will start going soon, I think. What is not looking good in any way, shape or form is the kale. Look at how terrible this looks, you guys. So clearly I had something in here eating it and I have kale in other places and they all look like this. So I guess I'll have to start kale over again cause that clearly didn't work. I'm gonna hit the rest of the vegetable beds and then we'll circle, circle back. Okay, so over here I've got um, mostly heirloom indeterminate tomatoes growing. Um, of many varieties. I don't know that I have two of anything, to be honest, because uh, I just can't decide. I'm doing a Florida weave method on these. So you can see that I've um, put poles between each one and then I use twine and sort of weave them between the twine. So far, so good, but um, you know, that needs almost daily attention this time of year. So if you miss it for a couple of days, sometimes it's almost impossible to get back. On this side, I am growing almost all dwarf tomatoes. This is a new thing that I'm trying this year. And so far I love it. So this is, um, let's just see what this is. This is dwarf uh, pink opal and it's just fat and thick and stubby and they should get the same size tomatoes. It's just that the plants themselves are small. So this is really an experiment this year, this whole dwarf tomato bed to see how these all grow. Um, I do have some tomatoes on, 
Look at these beauties. Although I will tell you that I'm cheating. Uh, this is, it's called Good Hearted. It's a new Proven Winners variety that they sent me to trial and it came with flowers on it. So it's sort of cheating. But this one I grew myself and we do have some tomatoes on. So that's something. Then back over here in this bed, I've got um, sugar snap peas, which um, are actually still going just fine here. They actually just really started going. And then beans, and I will just keep successive planting beans in here. Unfortunately, I had some beets underneath here. And look at them now, a, um, oopsie, sorry, a cutworm got in there and got all of them. So I will have to replant beets. And here's some more really sad looking kale. Uh, over here is the onion and garlic bed. It's the first time growing garlic. I'm super excited about it. I think it's looking really good. I've got a couple different varieties here, and then I've got elephant garlic uh, growing on the end here. So I am so excited to have my first garlic harvest. And of course, those I planted in fall. This big mess down here are onions and I know that looks horrible. So what I'm trying to do this year is do Charles Dowding, um, check him out on uh, YouTube if you don't know him. Um, he is a great proponent, sort of the, the godfather of the no dig method, um, but he's got some great vegetable growing tips. Um, anyway, so he, he multi-sows onions, which is what I did. So I grew these from seed and then I planted that in, bu in bunches and you can see what this looks like. So see if I can get you in there so you can actually see that. So um, what will happen is I won't get huge onions, but I will get many onions and probably, if this all works, more pounds of onions. But the best thing about this is that I can come in here, and I have been doing this, and pull out small ones to use as, like, here's a little small one in there to use as green onions. So I cut those up for salads and everything else. So uh, it's a bit of a mess and not what you're probably used to seeing for onions, but we'll see how it goes. It's always an experiment, right? Okay, so let's double back to the flowers. So these four small beds, and I will turn around so we're not facing into the sun. These four small beds are all for, for flowers. And I always do them in a color theme. So this one is orange, that one is whites and greens, that one is blues and purples, and this one is pinks and reds. But I didn't, things are not going great with these. First of all, they all have sweet peas in the appropriate colors growing up the middle. Those are doing great and are gonna start blooming any second now they all have nice buds on them. But I ran out of space to grow things from seed and, um, I decided to just direct sow most things and it's not going well. So I keep sowing things in here and I just don't see a lot of activity. So I'm not sure what the fate of these is. Next year I'm gonna have to plan that a little bit better. Um, but over here I've got some, uh, this is amaranth, which is beautiful. Um, get a pretty um, kind of red dreadlock on it. This was supposed to be, this is the pink bed. This was supposed to be ladybird rose nasturtium. Well, all of my ladybird roses and nasturtiums are this very bright gold orange color. So I wrote to the company where I bought them from and we'll see what they say, but clearly something was labeled wrong there. And then um, this is the orange, this is the orange bed. And there's a lot of zinnias in here, but again, the bugs have been terrible, you guys. It's just been a really for slugs and every kind of bug. It's just been, it's just been favorable bug weather and bad flower weather. Here's, here's another amaranth. It's just starting to, starting to do its tassel thing. I love those and cut flowers. So let's just stop for a minute and take a look at the, at the pond, which you guys saw in that video. It's actually looking really, really good. Um, every day I get a new lily pad or, and I'm so excited. In fact, I don't know if you can see through the water, but this is going to be today's and I see five, four more under the water waiting to come up. Now I did throw some black pond dye in here, just a couple of drops because the quart um, would have been enough for like a one acre pond or something. But everything's looking good and I actually am loving this. My little solar fountain is doing its thing. Um, I have been loving this way more than I thought I would. It brings me great amounts of joy and I really hope I get a water lily flower because that would just really be the icing on the cake. So we're not quite done yet because along the sides, I have been growing fruit. 
So this is a Liberty Apple Espalier here. And I've got, at its base, I've got three tiny little strawberries that I just picked up at the hardware store. Um, there is a, um, trying to think of the name of it, bushel and berry raspberry shortcake, I think it's called. It's a short thornless raspberry. So I have one of those, this is all very symmetrical. I have one on each side of that. And then this, this is, so I've got three currants on each end. This is um, a current that I'm trying to espalier. And so here is a guide wire right here, which I've got three of them. You can't really see them, but I've got three of them for the um, fruit trees. But once this grows up as a single stem to here, I will top it and then it will go either direction and stretch out along there and hopefully will be quite beautiful. Um, same deal down here. And then in each corner, I have a ground cherry planted. So this is another new thing for me this year. I've never grown ground cherries, but they're supposed to be wonderful. And you can see there's already like a lovely little fruit on there. So that is pretty exciting. And it's pretty much the same deal on the other side. Although over here, I have a Bartlett pear. So this will um, serve as a pollinator for the Asian pear I have growing up by the house as well. So that's why I picked this pear tree. Um, more strawberries, raspberries, and the same. I've got a couple of things in pots down here that are just kind of growing there to protect them from critters. So in the future, I have room in the back here, this little bed along the back. I think I want to try to grow a Belgian fence. Um, which is a method of espalier where you plant things in a V and they crisscross to create a diamond pattern. So maybe this fall I'll start that, we'll see. But that's sort of on the agenda. Got some weeds I should be dealing with there. But that is the vegetable garden in a very sunny way. Here's how things are growing so far. I hope your garden is growing really great. So that's the vegetable garden, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this quick look around. Um, we'll just see how it comes. You know how vegetable gardens are. Hopefully the bugs lay off a little bit now that we've got some sun and things will really get growing and I'm looking forward to that first harvest. I hope your gardens are growing great. We will see you soon. Hey you guys, every time you hit that subscribe button, a Newfoundland gets a treat. Is that good, Odin? Someone's just subscribed? Here. You might even get a little drool with that.